My name is Charles, and I serve here at Transformation Church as one of the executive pastors. And I want to take a moment before we jump into the message just to say thank you, first of all, for watching. It means the world to us that you would be a part, no matter where you're watching from, no matter who you are. I'm believing that this message is going to encourage your faith and hopefully transform your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you take a moment, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Not for us, but really for you. We want to be a resource to encourage your faith and be with you on this journey of following Jesus. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the message today. I hope it blesses you. I have a word that I think is about to shake the foundations of our church, the world, and it has already shaken the foundations of my life. And um, I'm going to deliver it in 50 minutes. I'm going to hit you so hard in the next 50 minutes that you will be able to walk out in the snow and not even feel cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's this one about to, somebody shout at me, start sharp. How many of you have started something this past week, this first week of the year that you know you've been needing to do, but you actually started something? Come on, let's go. Okay. There are some people in here with their hands like you was about to lie. And I thank you for being honest in this church. Because we're a hot church. We're humble, open, and transparent. What I'm saying is, yes, at the beginning of the year would have been the best time to start. But the next best time is today. Somebody say start. I feel like there's a mandate on me to help people move from complacency. Because it's very difficult to push a, a car that is not moving. But if you can just get a little momentum on the vehicle. Okay, some of y'all acting like you ain't never ran out of gas before. I, I just, I don't know where y'all just came from, but y'all better know what type of church this is. How many people done ran out of gas before? And how many people had to push the vehicle to a either safer spot or a place where you could get some gas, okay? I know some of y'all been privileged all your life. Your daddy was like, yeah, AAA. Okay, but what I'm telling you is some of us didn't have AAA. Some of us, we had to get in there. And, and, and if, you, if, if you're from the Midwest, the thing I love about the Midwest is that if you are struggling outside, th there are people here that will actually stop what they doing and actually get out and help you. I know it's not like that on the East Coast because y'all need to be saved in New York and Boston and <laughs> Chicago and all that. But if you come to Oklahoma and you're on the side of the road, all you got to do is like... I mean, do it for three minutes, somebody's going to stop, okay? And, and what happens is if you get anybody with wisdom, what they say is you get in the driver's seat, open the door, and put it in neutral. And I'm going to get behind, and it's so beautiful because when one man gets behind, then other people stop because they like, I just didn't want to do it by myself. <laughs> and so then there'll be like two or three other dudes that get behind, and the whole goal is to take you from a stopped position to a starting position. And when you get somebody behind you to push a little bit, it's much easier to steer a moving vehicle than one who is staying in the same place. I come to submit to you this year. The engine doesn't even have to be on for you to be moving in the right direction. This does not have to be like, oh, I feel you. Uh -uh -uh. We're just trying to get this thing out of a stagnant position. And I believe by faith, I've been called to push you today. Somebody shout at me one more time. Start, start. All right. You've given me permission. God told me. As I started this um, 21 days of prayer and fasting, I'm doing a fast I've never done before. I'm not telling you what it is, but it is a struggle bus. <laughs> um, I just feel for what I'm believing God for in this season, I, I wanted to, I wanted to um, do something that, um, that, that was an indicator for me of what I'm believing God for. And as I started on this, this fast, um, when I, when, I, when I be fasting, I be, I be expecting God to speak to me. Like, I know some of y'all just like the worship music and stuff, and y'all just like reading y'all Bible. God, <laughs> say something. <laughs> like, like, I don't care how you do it. You can do it through the Goof Troop movie my daughters is watching. You can do it through something that's on a napkin, but speak to me. And the Holy Spirit, when I was up early just praying, 
he said something to me that he's never said to me before. And I was like, God, can I release this to the church? He said, I only gave it to you to live it out and then give it away. He said, so today I want you to tell the church the message I gave you for 2024. This ain't the word of the year, but this is a prophetic word for you. What, uh... He said, the goal is not to just start sharp. It's to stay sharp. How you doing, Robert? And he said, and if you're going to stay sharp, Michael, there's some things I need you to revisit. And I was like, okay, Lord, what, what do I need to revisit? What do I need to read? What do I need to do new? What do you want me to do? Anything you want me to do, Lord, I'll do. <laughs> and he said, very simply, Michael. Doing good, man. I want you all of 2024, this is the title of my message, and I want you to write it down. He said, I want you to strengthen your strengths. Ooh, strengthen. I said, what? He said, the things I've already made you strong in get stronger. I said, hold on, wait, God. I thought I'm supposed to be strengthening my weakness. He said, no, I do that. Y'all missed it. He said, I will be strength in your weakness. But you have a responsibility to strengthen your strengths. And I said, what you mean? He said, everything that you think you do good, I you can do better. I said, what you mean? He said, every time you speak, you do it for a living. People know you for that. Can you get better at it? I said, hold on, Holy Spirit, what you saying? I thought you gave me the messages. He said, I did. But I don't want you to preach for an hour and a half no more. Oh. I want you under an hour. I said, oh. <laughs> but some of my examples, Lord. <laughs> some of the things that help the people of God. He said, you can do everything if you strengthen your strength. Okay. That's good. He said, if you know it backwards and forwards, if that you get good. in it earlier, if you take out the stuff that is fluff, if you actually get in that thing and, and rehearse it before you do it, don't just go off of your raw talent. If you would just strengthen your strength. And I'm being this transparent because you're going to watch me do it in front of you all year. Okay. That's so good. See, I'm not scared of nobody because for me to actually live this out, I got to live it out. And some of you are scared to strengthen gold. what God is giving you because you're scared of failing. Failing is a part of it. The only way you can strengthen something that you've already had a confidence in is you have to become a student again. And some of you are too proud to fail again. Ooh, I'm already in my bag. Oh, you thought because your business was successful, you can't strengthen it? Oh, you thought because you already got a good marriage, y'all couldn't get better communication? And the way that you do that is by looking at other people who don't have what you have and wish what they had and makes you lackadaisical on what God gave you. Okay. How we going to start sharp and stay sharp? We're going to strengthen the things that God has already given us to do. Oh, you're going to die. Okay. Uh... Oh, I'm going to die. What would happen if everything you're at a six or a seven at, you became three levels better at? Emberly, what would happen if the organizational skills that are already up here notched up two more notches? How more efficient could you be? How, how many more people could you help if you just organized? No, I know I got some shoes to give you somewhere. I know I got some shoes to give you somewhere. I know they somewhere. Hold on, maybe they at the storage. Maybe at, what if you didn't do spring cleaning, but you did right now cleaning? <laughs> and the stuff that you ain't never going with, it ain't ever fit you and won't ever fit you. Let's be honest. What if, what if, I, uh, in, in, in my life, the first thing that I did to start this up is I went to my closet. And I have witnesses. I gave away so much clothes. So many shoes. I'm talking about with tags on them, name brand, everything you think. The, er, gave them all away. And somebody's like, why are you doing this? I said, I need less to manage. Ooh. 
Yes. You want a blessing, I need less. Because I need more room to do what God's called me to do. Organizing all of this stuff is not making me better. Okay. What happens when the blessing becomes a curse? Somebody say, I'm going to strengthen my strength. Need some coal? Now, I want you to start thinking, what are your strengths? What are the things that you have just discounted as natural for you? Mm, I know where some coal's at. I just might as well go there. That God said, that's the thing I want you to become better in this year. We're always going to have a weakness. That's why we need grace. That's why we need God. That's why we need to actually be. But what if you became a better graphic designer this year? What if you actually thought about what you were going to say before you said it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm in too many people's business right now. What? Just, just what if you actually made a budget this year? And you stressed. Somebody got so convicted they started coughing up. They almost threw up over there. <laughs> yes, you got out of debt, but you haven't been able to invest. So you keep throwing up out of debt since 2014, <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> and I'm saying, great, but what else? Where, do, where does the next level come from? And the Holy Spirit convicted me so hard, Michael. He said, he said to me, he said, Michael, I'm expecting more from what I gave you. That one song in 1996 was not why I gave you that. That, 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 that. that one piece of clothing you put out is not why I gave you that creative eye. And, and many times when we don't create, we critique. The reason why everybody is commenting and critiquing and talking about everything everybody else is doing is because they ain't doing what they supposed to be doing. Break. I don't have time to comment on your exhale or your fail. Because I'm in here strengthening my strength. Okay. Okay, all right. Some of you are like, Mike, Pastor Mike, strengthen my strength. Okay. Let me give you some synonyms for strength. You need to build up, enhance, enlarge, establish your gift, extend your gift, heighten your gift, heighten and increase, intensify, invigorate, reinforce, set up, step up, support, sustain, and toughen the thing that God's already placed on the inside. Yeah. Dang it. Okay. Who would you be? If you strengthened your strength, many of you would be the leader and not the follower. Many of you would be the lender and not the borrower. Mm. The Bible says that he has given us the ability to produce wealth. But many of us have not strengthened the thing that we can just do. You've been working on 17 hobbies that will never produce for your family. Oh, the conviction. You've been doing things, but God has given us some inherent gifts that I believe that this year we're supposed to strengthen. What if you leveled up in love? My hands are dry. I was reading this book the other day, Nonviolent Communication. Why was I reading this book? Because I have a way of talking. The people who really know me, know me. <laughs> that doesn't have much, uh, doesn't have much cushion around it. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know what I actually mean. That don't work well in marriage. I talk for a living. But direct communication to you gets me sleeping on the couch with Natalie. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to say, well, I'm a man. I'm a grown man. I'm no, I ordered a book off of Amazon and got Scott one. <laughs> am I telling the truth? Scott got one too. <laughs> Why? Because I have to strengthen what others call my strength. 
but I know there's still an area for me to improve in. What if you maximize the marriage? What if you didn't need the marriage counseling because y'all really worked on it and you could help young married people? Some of you have never even seen yourself in the position of giving it away because you're so broken and messed up right now. But what if y'all made a decision the next five years, we're going to figure this thing out. I'm going to figure out how to be romantic and I don't like being romantic. No, okay. This is going to take you being honest with what you have already resolved ain't you. This just me. It don't have to be. This just me. It does not. I was so convinced I was going to be fat and big my whole life that I started to tell myself, it's just me. Give me a 3X. Give me a 4X. I'm going to eat the whole buffet. Do they got a buffet? Is it all inclusive? This was my life. It's just, if we going to live, we all going to die. These are things that might as well enjoy. But at some point, I had to make a decision to divorce the thing that I already had made a contract with. And some of you cannot move forward into what God has because you're going to have to break the contract with the lie you believed. Mm. You're going to have to strengthen your strength. Say it with faith. Strengthen my strength. Can I give you another word for strength? Gift. Your strength is your gift. It's a gift from God. Name for me a couple of things that you know was a gift from God. You didn't even have to work hard from it. Come on, some of y'all just, what is it? Talking, humor, what is it? Leading, come on, somebody talk to me. What'd you say? Charisma, Charisma. just when you walk in the room, you don't never meet a stranger. Everybody <laughs> love you, taking you out. Want to introduce you today, mom. It's just a... Could I, could I submit to you that that gift that maybe has been diminished as just a part of your personality is actually a strength Oh, I'm stuck. That God wants more out of to be oh, used for I'm his stuck. glory. <laughs> Second I'm Timothy. Stuck. Chapter 1, <laughs> verses 6 and 7. I want to introduce you to a young man named Timothy who has been given some gifts but comes up against opposition. And he writes to the OG Paul. And if anybody doesn't know what OG means, it's original gangster. It's just a term of endearment for somebody who's been in the game a while and understands the pathways of what somebody else may be going through. And Timothy is a young man who has been judged because he's so young doing big things. And he was a young man and he was like, I don't know what to do with all these people and da 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 da. And he writes to Paul and Paul writes back to him. And this is what he says to him in verse six. He said, therefore, I remind you, stir up the gifts of God on the inside of you. Yell out, stir up the gifts. Mm. He says, I'm reminding you to do something with what's already there. I didn't say go find a gift. I did not say go copy a gift. I did not say go and get a mentor that can possibly lay on you a new gift. He said, stir up the gift of God, which is in you. Somebody say it's in me. He said, Boom. stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. He said, I already approved that these were gifts on the inside of you. I already confirmed this. Why are you doubting what you know God gave you? So you need to be reminded to stir it up. For God has not given us. Y'all didn't know that scripture was there. Our whole Christian life, we've been quoting that separate from the first part. You're scared? Oh, no, no. God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. <laughs> Put it in context. Stir up the gift of God inside of you. 
It's already in you, and I confirmed it by laying on my hands. I don't know if I should do that. God is not giving you a spirit of fear. To walk in your gift, fear would keep you from doing that. Well, what would they say? And nobody in my family's ever done that. And what if they don't accept me? God is not giving you a spirit of fear. Well, I don't know how to actually, and I've never I've gone to school for this, and I, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a what? He said, for you to actually maximize your gifts, you need to not be scared no more. I didn't say scared. I said scared. Some of y'all so scary of the thing that God's already confirmed in you. Natalie, God has created you to be creative. Don't be scared of stepping out and doing what he told you to do. There is nobody that can stop you when God put the gift on the inside of you. This year, I'm about to release so much music. Y'all, God should not have gave me this word. I'm picking to <laughs> talking like this. He should have not given me this word. Because one thing I know, if I don't know anything else, that I'm strengthened to be creative through music. It don't matter if you don't like it. Because the goal is not... For people's appreciation, it's for obedience. You missed it. And so many of us have capped our gifts because we want it to work in man's eyes. But what if the gift was just to bring him glory? What if he put it in you to get it out of you so that it could be? There's somebody that'll do it for 20 likes. And they're content. And they're faithful. I'll bless them another way. This don't got to make money. This don't got to be the thing that pays for that. I will pay for the house a different way. Will you be obedient to release what I put on the inside of you? Somebody say, stir up the gift. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. Okay. Let me bring some context to, to you in this. Because when Paul, the OG, was talking to Timothy, he, he was working in his gift as a pastor. And this is how we extract truths from the Bible where everybody don't got to be a pastor to be working in your gift. But we can get the principles that God is trying to share us. He said, he, he said this young pastor's doing it, but, but, but he was a young man and he came up against opposition. What lets me know a couple of things. Number one, God does not have an age limit to a calling. I just need to talk to everybody under the age of 25. Stop waiting. Stop listening to these memes that say in your 30s, that's when you build. And in your 40s, that's is when. What if God called you to do it at 18? Amen. I am at a different place in my life because I heard the call when I was still a teenager. And I started doing things that other people wasn't doing that didn't make no sense and didn't give me any money. But can I just say this? Some of y'all want to get paid so bad you're missing the place of your purpose. You're calling everything manipulation and somebody's using you and all that other stuff. No, dummy, you're not good yet. Okay. Uh, maybe you're good at the skill, you're, you, but you're not good at people. Ooh. Every training place is not for you to be in charge. Oh. I can't tell you how many places I've been where my title did not even matter. It was what I was getting more than what I was giving. It was a blessing to get anything at that moment. When I started running sound at this church, I was getting paid $35 a week. That wasn't enough gas money for the 15 passenger van I had borrowed to get there. It's a story for another time, but it's true. But what, I, what God was teaching me at that sound booth, getting $35 an hour, being there from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., is faithfulness. You can't put finances on faithfulness. The way that I've learned to show up when nobody shows up came from me having to be the first one there, me and Brother Glenn. I don't know if Brother Glenn is still in here, but he serves on our usher committee right now. Me and Brother Glenn would be the first people 
and he would turn on the lights and I'd be down there praying and rolling up mic cords and I learned faithfulness. Because God said, yeah, you're good at music and you're good at talking, but you're not good at faithfulness. So I need to strengthen that. Because for what I see 10 years from now, you're going to have to be faithful when people leave. You're going to have to be faithful when they run off with a narrative that ain't true. <laughs> you're going to have to be faithful to me, when, like, like, like no matter what happens. So I got to teach you something that you can't learn on the platform. Today, I just came very simply to tell you, stand strong in your gift and stir that thing up. That's it. All year, if you not getting back. I was above the water, bro. What are you doing? Lessons. You used to be able to play the piano, and now every time you play the one same song, and everybody's like, you can play the piano? Oh, I used to. <laughs> Used to, and you killing that one song. You used to really, you know, really tear. <laughs> there's songs that God gave you. There's songs that he wants you to write. But for you to be able to get it out in the spare time that you have between the three kids that you have, you're going to have to get more efficient. So you need to go take lessons. I ain't paying for no lessons. Cool. We're going to die. level that keeps God from doing what he planned to do. We're going to die. It's not God at this point. There are certain things that I know I have to do. I have to be diligent and dedicated and faithful to, to get to the place where God can release what is already in me. Strengthen your strength. Pastor Mike, what are some strengths? Administration, discernment, exhortation, encouragement, faith. Giving is a strength. I'm not just talking about money. Some of y'all, God gives you stuff to give it away. Decide in your heart this year, I'm going to give more than I've ever given. I told my wife what we giving in crazy faith offering next year, this year. For that to happen, God's going to have to give seed to the sower. <laughs> Let me be. But I already decided. He said, strengthen your strength. I'm going to give the most outrageous thing that anybody, I don't know nobody in my family that's given this much to anything. I want to be the first. God, would you bless me to a place? Could you, could you open my ears enough? Could you give me ideas and witty inventions? Could you, could you put me in the right investment? Could you show me who to connect with? Because it's already made up in my heart. This year, I'm going to strengthen my strength of giving, the gift of healing. Do y'all know what another gift is that some of y'all discount? The gifting of helps. It's literally in the Bible. People are gifted to help. And you've been like, I'm just the only one out here doing this. <laughs> Ain't nobody else helping. The reason it's a burden for you is because God gifted you. And he said, instead of being mad at him, come up with a training course to help people that help. Y'all not hearing me yet. Gift of leadership. How you had a gift of leadership and you always on the bench? Oh. No, no, no. I, need, I, just, I, just, need, I just need to talk to you. Because you know you're a leader. And anything you step into, people gather. Anything that word, you do gather. and you put half an effort into, it seems like 10 times better than everybody else. But all you do these days is sit on a bench and judge. I could have scored that. Mm -mm. You don't play no more. You're retired. Yeah. And we say that for people who are athletes and in sports, but there are so many retired Christians. You don't serve no more. You don't help no more. Yeah, dude, that we was... We don't even uh, know what you used to do. You used to do this stuff. You used to it run was crazy. stuff. You used to prophesy. You used to create. And all you do now is bring coffee and say hello. You think that it's a privilege that you showed up. What's actually crazy... It, I can't... Hold on. 
he was giving a message on something similar to what to the threat so like he was talking about gosh i cannot remember what he was talking about during it but what he was talking about was the threat And to us it is, but to God, he's disappointed. He put all of that in you, and you give it to fantasy football? Effort, energy. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with fantasy football if you have the margin to do that. And then went home and but finished gonna, the sermon that, at home. That ain't going to get you nowhere with what God told you to do. I am offending. You should see the faces that are looking at me right now. I don't care either. Because <laughs> I've been sent on a mission to push you into the place that you got to get to. You need to strengthen your strength. Paul tells Timothy, stir that thing up. It's in you. Stop complaining about what they don't got and who's leaving and what stir what I put in you up. <laughs> Write this down. Teaching is a gift. Wisdom is a gift. We all have gifts. And they all come from God. That's why I don't, I don't think God gave me no gifts. Stop it. It might have been crushed. Your gift may have been devalued by somebody who was threatened by it. Your, your gift may have been mislabeled. Thank God it. But somebody say, I have a gift. Woo. you got a gift. Your gift is not just mothering. That, that may be a part of your maternal instinct. Yeah, you, but there's some other stuff he's giving you. That you've been discounting that God is counting on. I'm going to prove it to you. James 1.17. Every good and perfect. What does it say? gift <laughs> is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change he has not changed his mind about your gift he doesn't change like other people and i hear some of you saying right now pastor mike how do i know what my strength is three things very simply okay how, how can you identify your strength? Because some of you are like really thinking right now, and I want you to do that. I want you to start going back. And some of my seasoned saints, the older people, the gift does not expire. Amen. Some of y'all think because you got grandkids, now it's time for you to sit down. The gift that God, do y'all know Abraham, how old he was? When he started, do, do you know how old Sarah was giving birth? <laughs> my mama said she was old. <laughs> How do I know what my strength is? It's something that's natural. These are the gifts that come easy to you, but are harder for others. What comes easy? What's natural? Hey, man, have a good one. Thanks for uh, hanging out. naturally has the gift of hospitality. Like, literally, I could tell Abby, text her, hey, I'm at the door. I'm coming to drop something off for Charles. She'll open the door with a plate of brownies. I was like, when did you have the time? Oh, I was just cooking brownies. The Holy Spirit told me to cook brownies. And I'm like, I mean, she has showed up at my house for a meeting with brownie mix, eggs, and soft butter in her purse to make brownies with my daughters. How did you even know we had the stuff? And she was like, well, if you didn't, I brought it. And pulled out eggs. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. But it's the thing that comes natural. My wife, Natalie, she is naturally caring. Like, she be caring so much that it get on my nerve. Like, Mike, don't make them. I'm like, make them. We paid to be here. She be like, be quiet. The other people's experience. This is my seat. I can say whatever I want to right here. She just thinks about everybody else. I was like, think about us. Think about me. <laughs> Care for me. <laughs> but caring for her comes naturally. My brother Aaron, he has a gift of paying attention to details. 
one room, any room, this room, if we walk into a room together, he in three seconds knows where all the exits are. No, no, no. I'm not even, like, he knows where all the exits are. He knows when people move. He knows who came in at what time. I'd be like, hey, bro, what time is it? He was like, well, when you got in here, it was 726. And then when you sat down, I'd be like, what in the world? But he naturally pays attention to details. That's why he does my answer. And that <laughs> is a, somebody say gift, or a strength. So how do you know what your gift is? It might be natural. Let me give you one more, uh, another way that you know what your gift is. It's named. These are gifts that loved ones and strangers can identify in you. People start naming things. Like, 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 okay. I, I told y'all a second ago, I'm naturally, I was naturally good at music. Like I didn't take lessons, I didn't do it, but I could hear, I could put stuff together, I could, all that other stuff. It took prophetess Pam Vanette when I was living backwards to call me up to a stage in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma on 145th. And she said, you are going to be a pastor. And I laughed at that woman in her face. <laughs> she said, I know it sounds crazy. I have the prophetic word on tape. She said, I know it sounds crazy, but you're going to use the humor and the irony and people's real life situations. And you're going to explain the word of God to people all over the world. And she said, and your ministry won't just be to young people. You're going to minister to people all over the world. And I'm literally sitting there like, <laughs> she drunk. <laughs> and over and over, there have been men and women of God who've come to him and they named it. I don't, I don't know. I know you do the music, but you're going to be a pastor. There's going to be tons of people that... And, 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 and for years, I denied it. Man, you don't know me. You don't know what gift things God gave me. And that's why you need people around you, because sometimes they can see things you can't. Some of y'all have been so isolated that the things you need to be named in your life, you haven't let nobody in to be able to speak to that thing. So, 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 so they can be natural... They can be named, or watch this, they have to be nurtured. How are your strengths going to get stronger? They got to be nurtured. These are gifts that have been watered by your environment, encouragement, and effort. I said your environment, encouragement, and what? Some people have stopped considering what God gave you a gift because it was never nurtured. It came to you natural, and it was never nurtured, and so there are people who are better than you and further along in it, and so you don't think it's a gift anymore. And God says, all you got to do is put a little water on that. For everybody else, they got to go through all this other stuff. But if you would just put a little water, a little faithfulness, a little consistency, a little intentionality on that, it would grow exponentially. In other words, I'm saying to you what Paul said to Timothy, stir it up. Stir it up. Your career may not be your purpose. Mm. That's a tough one to swallow because you've given 17 years of schooling to it. You're going to be paying Fannie Mae for the next 30 because of what somebody planted in your mind that you should be. But you seem to can't find no satisfaction in it. You're a lawyer by day and a DJ by night. Y'all know it's the truth. You at Guitar Center buying all this stuff, ain't reading no law books. Yeah. Because there's no burden for it. But now you have responsibilities. And so how do I get from the place of responsibility to the place of purpose and doing the thing that I feel like God gets glory out of my life? That means you're going to have to put in effort. That means you're going to have to optimize the things that you've been doing that don't yield fruit. And you're going to have to do the things that God tells you to do. And this is when I talk about nurturing your gift. Parents, I need to talk to you for a second. Because the things that annoy you about your kids are usually gifts in disguise. 
The very thing you can't stand about them, the very thing that gets on your last nerve, they'd be tap dancing on your last nerve. Why are you always asking so many questions? Because God gave them a gift of discernment. And every time they talk, they finding you out. Uh-oh. And you can't stand it. Because they know you've been lying about it. Never mind. But what I'm telling you is our primary responsibility as a parent is to nurture the gifts. Of God that is on the inside of them. Can I give y'all a revelation that I got today? It's good. Proverbs 22, 6. It's a familiar scripture, but I want to read it with the backdrop of knowing that we have to nurture the gifts of our children. It says, train your children or start your children off in the way that they should go. And even when they are old, they will not depart or turn from it. I've only heard Proverbs 22, 6 in talking about disciplining your children. Train a child in the way they should go. That's why I beat them. Yeah. That's why I beat them. My mama beat me, my girl, girl, mama beat her, and we're going to just be a beating family. We beat, we on the beat. So you can't mine gold with a gold but pickaxe? What if, for just a Are second, you serious? We took it from the context of punishment and we put it in the context of purpose. And God says, I put some gifts on side of this little child that are unrefined, and I'm giving them to you. I need you to train this child, nurture this child, strengthen their strengths, encourage them in the way that they should go. So that when they get old and are presented with opportunities and career choices and people to distract them, that they won't depart from the purpose, the gift, the strength that I gave them. That's revelation right there, y'all. I'm telling you, what if it's about stirring up our gift? Somebody say, stir it up. Greatness is always nurtured. Tiger Woods, Serena Williams, David Beckham, Venus Williams, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, Michael Jackson, Justin Bieber, Whitney Houston. What do all these people have in common? At something, they were great, and they all were told what to do since children. Now, I'm not saying their stories ended good. What I am saying is that they reached a level of greatness because they were nurtured. I'm not going to ask you to look at your kids right now. But what I am saying is maybe just telling them what they're not. Are you just like your daddy? Well, hold on. He's not here. He's unfaithful. He's not intentional. And now you're going to speak. Is that how you're nurturing? My. Right now, I'm in a nurturing situation with Isabella Monetai. My daughter, from, from as far back as I can remember, she has been a leader and a boss. She, she'll tell me what she wants, tell me where she wants it, tell me where to go. I, 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 I've been calling her a boss baby before the movie came out, before anything, because that oh. little girl has just this gift of God to, to lead and know what she wants. So when my daughter came to me when she was five or six years old and, and told me I could no longer go on date night with her mother, I said, Bella, why can't I go on date night with your mother? She said, because every time you go on date night, I feel lonely. And I said, I'm married to your mother. Yeah. You're my daughter. And I explained to her the importance of having our priorities right in relationship. It goes from having a relationship with God and having a relationship with me and mommy and then me and mommy can pour into you. And she said, I get it now, daddy. And the Holy Spirit hit me one day. He said, Michael, you see that your daughter already wants to use her gift. He said, I want you to use your influence and nurture her gift. I said, what you mean? He said, I want you to take that situation that happened with you explaining the relationship goals to her, and I want you to turn it into her and your first book. And then I want you to put the money away from that book to give to her future. He said, I want you to nurture what I put on the inside of her. So I told Bella, we writing a book. She said, when? I said, 
Now she's seven years old. She said, when? And so we started working on the book. I told her what was going to happen. Then I showed her the book. And the, the book actually comes out February 6th. It's called A Cup of Love. And uh, it's called Relationship Goals for Kids. And, and I made a huge mistake, y'all. See, I'm learning how to nurture. If you, if you pay attention to this, it says, and I, I thought I conveyed it to the publisher, but I, I, I should have overemphasized it. It says, um, written by number one New York Times bestseller Michael Todd and illustrated by Joel Santana. When Bella saw this book, she saw her likeness on the book, but she didn't see her name. And that baby said, this book wouldn't be a book without me. <laughs> oh, look, she, y'all, I'm not even playing. She said, this my book. She said, why my name not on the front of the book? Y'all, I called the publisher. I said, is there any way? <laughs> but I didn't say, you disrespectful. You should be grateful that I got a book with your name on it. No, matter of fact, I'm not. I said, yes, ma'am. I apologize. Our next book will have your name before that is. You know? Okay. But what am I doing? I'm trying to nurture and stir up the gifts that are on the inside. Pastor Mike, what are you trying to say? Strengthen your strengths. We in the second Sunday of 2024. Stir it up. God's going to start to reveal to you through prayer and fasting the things that you have let be dormant in your life, that you have let just sit there, and God's going to say, try to draw again. Try to paint. Go ahead. No, no, no. Pick up the guitar. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Start writing the book. No, 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 no. Make the curriculum. No, fill out the application. You're going back to school. No, 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 no. It's time to stir up the gifts. Pastor Michael, I feel discouraged. I have too much weighing on me. I don't know where to start. I don't feel like my gifts are a strength anymore. The only reason that you don't feel like your strength is a strength is because of these four things. Write them down because these are strength killers. Comparison, coveting, complacency, and conforming. If you conform to what the job wants you to be, you'll give up your gift. If you become complacency, what God has given you, you'll give up the gift. If you are coveting what somebody else has and not being grateful for what you have, you'll give up the gift. And if you are stuck in comparison, you'll give up strengthening the gift that God has given you. That's why Romans 12 2 say, don't conform to the patterns of this world. That's what they do all the time. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Today I came to fire up your gift. And for a few people in this room, I came to tell you, it's time to flip the gift. Everybody say flip the gift. I just need to talk for two minutes to the people whose gifts have been mislabeled. You, 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 you were told that what you have because it was going the wrong direction wasn't from God. When I was a sinner, I was still a leader. I was just leading people the wrong way. And all I had to do was flip the gift. And now there's people coming from South Africa to sit in a service while I'm preaching. I could have been doing it in the wrong direction for my whole life. But I flipped the gift. That's why it's important to get context to Bible stories. The reason why the OG Paul could talk this confident to Timothy is because Paul used to be named Saul. And Saul was the chief sinner. He went from the number one bounty hunter of Christians to the number one contributor 
to the Bible and getting the word of God and the gospel spread throughout all of the land at that time. How do you do that when you have an encounter with God? And he flips your gift. If I could do a backflip, I would. I almost brought a trampoline up here. I was yeah. this close. Because if you could just take everything you've been doing in the wrong direction and just flip it. God said, I can turn what people have labeled wrong and what people have told you is a dysfunction. People, even right now, you've heard, oh, I'm introverted. No, 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 no. That, that, that means you charge by yourself. Are you serious? But that also means you know how to reach people who charge like that. What if the thing that people have been labeling is actually your strength? That means your small group ain't going to have a million people in it. It's going to have three faithful people. And y'all going to love each other and be there for each other and then take breaks and be like, today, let's not talk. We'll meet next week. Like, what if the thing you're trying to get rid of is the thing that God is trying to stir up? Every gang leader, you're a gatherer. You're just taking people to the wrong place. Every gossip, you're an evangelist. You just got the wrong message in your mouth. Oh, my goodness. Somebody shot at me, flip the gift. Everybody that has an anxiety, everybody that is riddled with anxiety, mind Iron is racism. better? You're you a prayer serious? warrior. Because you've proven to us that focus is not your problem. You just focus on everything you can't control. If you would flip the gift. If I was going through something, I would want you praying for me because you're going to focus on every detail of my situation. And you're going to take it to the one who is in control. It's time for us to flip the gift. Everybody's standing. It's my last point. Strength submitted to God is success. And strength unsubmitted to God becomes stress. I'm going to say it one more time. Your strengths, your gifts submitted to God, it's going to bring you to success. I can't tell you where I would be right now if I wouldn't have brought all of this that I had to God and say, do whatever you want. He has blown my mind but by what he's done with my submitted gift. But a strength that gift, unsubmitted to God, becomes stress to you. It's time to stir up the gift and strengthen your strength. I want to pray for people that today would be the last day that you consider what God gave you an option. I'm going to say it one more time. Today, I'm praying that it will be the last time that you consider the gift that God gave you an option in your life. I'm praying that it becomes a burden, a priority, something that you make practical steps this year to strengthen. You're an actor. Get in the play. Do the thing. Well, ain't nobody going to see it. This ain't for them to see. It's so you can start remembering lines again. You old now. And your brain don't work how it used to be. You need to get your memory back. Because four years from now, the call's going to come. The one that's going to change the family history. But if you don't strengthen your strength now, you won't be able to seize the opportunity in the time of the opportunity. What if you strengthen the number of scriptures you know by memory? You know them six scriptures that your grand nana told you. And they've kept you for years. But what if you learn six more this year? Because every time you need them, they don't, the, the, the Wi-Fi seem to be not working. I know there's one in there on purity somewhere, Lord. But what if you write Psalms 119 on your heart? How does a young man or a young woman keep his way pure? 
by hiding themselves in the word of God. I remember when my mama told me that scripture I needed to recite because I was out here hoeing. Oh, can we be real? And we were in the laundry room at our house on, on uh, 35th and Yale. She said, Michael, you need to remember Psalms 119.9. And I can't tell you how many times I've been ready to do something that was going to take me back into a sin cycle that I left. And that Psalms 119 jumped out. That's what the Bible means when it says, I will hide your word on my heart. What if you just strengthened the thing that you already have strength in? Today, I wanted us to pray together. I wanted to make a strengthen your strength prayer. And I wanted us to say it all together. I don't know if they have it for the screen, but if they do, if they don't, I'll teach it. There it is. I want us to say this all together. And I honestly want everybody to be able to screenshot it, write it down. We're going to put it on all the social medias. And I'm, I'm just... I'm just asking all of us every day this week to say this. When I wake up, when I get ready to go to school, put it on your mirror. Say it with your kids. Teach it to your kids. But we're going to say it like this. Let's say it together. Say, dear God. Dear God. Today I acknowledge. Today I acknowledge. That I am gifted. That I am gifted. Selah. Selah. That phrase by itself does something to your confidence let's start it again dear god dear god today i acknowledge today i acknowledge that i am gifted that i am gifted i pray i pray that you would help me that you would help me stir up the gift stir up the gift you have placed on the inside of me that you have placed on the inside of me let your strength let your strength be my strength be my strength Every day, every day, every day this year, what would happen? And this is why I thank God for the model he's given me, progression, not perfection. Nobody's about to be perfect at this. Honestly, to get better, you're going to fail. But I want you to come back to this. And just like the OG Paul said to him, he said, stir up the gift on the inside of you so that you can see everything that God has called you to. Hands lifted all over this place. Father, I pray for my brother and sister. As you gave me a mandate to strengthen my strengths, the things, the gifts you put on inside of me, Today, I'm praying for every person under the sound of my voice and that will watch this on rebroadcast and will share it with a friend. I'm thanking you right now that they will stir up the gifts that you have placed on the inside of them. Father, every lie they have believed to leave the things alone that you put there, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that there is an activation today. That their faith would believe again for the impossible. That, Father, they wouldn't just clap for those that are experiencing in their life, but that they would believe that you could do a fresh and a new thing on the inside of them. To every person over the age of 45, I declare that there would be a new fire kindled on the inside of you. That you would not be a um, one to retire, but refire. That in your old age, you would be able to do things that you were never able to do in a previous season. And that your latter will be greater than your former. I thank you that you're stirring up the gift. And for every person under 45, I thank you that confusion goes away from their mind right now in the name of Jesus. That they will not be wanderers for decades trying to figure out what you have called them to do. That they will not conform to what culture is saying, but they will get a clear word from you. Father, let us all have an encounter with you that allows us to flip our gift. <laughs> Father, no matter if it's making money or if it's helping people, we don't just want to do what seems successful. We want to do what is successful in your eyes. So, Father, today we're making a commitment not to just start sharp, but stay sharp by strengthening our strengths. If you're in this room right now and you've never 
accepted the source of strength. His name is Jesus. Today, I want to introduce you to my best friend, the one who saved me from being a liar, a manipulator, somebody who was addicted to pornography. I done told you all my stuff. I was going the wrong way and leading people there. And God had an encounter with me and he flipped my gift. But it came when I gave my heart to Jesus. See, this is the only religion. Everybody prays to a God, but this is the only one where God comes to you and he says, give me your heart and I'll help you change your habits. And today, on the second week of 2024, there's some people that have been doing your own thing. You're watching online right now. You don't even know why this is on. Or you came into this building and God has been drawing you. Or the Holy Spirit has been drawing you this entire time. Today is your day of salvation. The first thing that God wants to flip is your heart towards him. He wants to bring you from darkness into light. And I'm telling you, you are in the right place at the right time to actually receive God. Today is the day of salvation. And we've been praying for you. So if that's you, you want to stop doing it your own way and you want to give your life to Christ. On the count of three, I just want you to lift your hands. One, you're making the greatest decision of your entire life. Two, your name is going to be written in the Lamb's book of life and your eternity is secure. Three, just shoot your hand up all over the room. I see you, my brother. I see you, my sister. I see you. Whole family, whole row. Oh, y'all, come on. I see you online. Just put your hand up. I see you. Come on. Glory to God. This is what it's all about here. You talking about strengthening your strength? You about to level up. At Transformation Church, we a family. Nobody prays alone. So can we all just lift our hands and lift our voice and say, God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I receive his strength in my life. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again with all power just for me. And today, I surrender my life. I'll serve you with all of it. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God praise for every person? Oh, come on, Transformation Church. They just got strengthened. Hallelujah. If you just made that decision and you're watching this, we want you to just scan the QR code that's on the screen. And we're going to help you. We're going to walk with you next week. I'm on fire, y'all. I promise you the message next week, we're strengthening our strength to another strength level of strength. Okay. Let's go. You don't want to miss it and you want to invite people. And there are people in here that need to meet us for prayer tomorrow night. Y'all, there have been over three, 400 people here every night for prayer, y'all. Yeah, you can clap it up for that. And what I'm asking is, if you can't come every night, I'm asking you, make it on Monday. Let's start our week off right. It's going to be this much snow out there, okay? Y'all, defrost your car, put a little ice. Come on. If you go to work tomorrow, come to prayer tomorrow. I just want us to get fired up in this next season. Tomorrow's day eight of fasting. If you haven't joined us, you got 14 days left. Get on this train and ride it. Ooh, ooh, okay. Some of y'all still getting saved. And if y'all need prayer for anything, I'm going to have the worship team sing another song. But I just feel there's a lingering anointing in here today. And, and God's keeping his promise. Some of y'all, he's giving you vision. You're going to leave this place. Before you leave this place, he's going to give you instructions of what to do with strengthening your strength. This, this church is, is a place where God meets with people so you can go out and really do your thing. So if you need prayer, I'm going to ask the altar workers to come right now for your marriage, for your family, for your finances. Whatever's going on in your life, these are regular people who got problems too. They just know how to pray. They know how to talk to God. And we're a real church in this place. So if you need prayer, I want you to come from all over the place. If you don't, as we sing this last worship song, you are dismissed. Get home safe. Father, I declare this will be our best week of fasting. I thank you, Father, that this is going to be the sharpest week we've ever had. And I thank you that this week you're going to strengthen us in Jesus' name. Go out and live a transformed life. We love you. We'll see you next week. Hey, I want to take a moment again before we jump off and say thank you. 
Our church is not built on one individual, but on the sacrifice of so many. And you being a part, it means the world. So thanks for watching the message. I also want to say thank you to the thousands of people around the world who are generous. It means the world. And we are able to represent, we're able to be generous and meet the needs of people because of your giving. If you haven't taken the step to give, trust me, there is no pressure at all. But if you feel led, you can text the word GIVE to 828282 or you can go online. When we partner together, God uses our generosity to make a difference. Again, if you haven't, take a moment to subscribe to the YouTube channel and more than watch it on YouTube, join us on Sundays. Every single Sunday we're here, 1045 CST AM. We would love to see you. And like we always say, go out and live a transformed life. All right. That's it. Remember, you can go and follow um, in the description of this video. Um, if you like this message, uh, make sure you like it um, on their on their YouTube channel, which is We Are Transformation. It's also linked in the bio of this video. Um, and thank you all for hanging out.